हेलो एवरी वन आई एम योर फ्रेंड शादाब इमाम वेलकम टू द इंट्रोडक्टरी लेक्चर ऑफ अवर न्यू टॉपिक सिमुलेशन सो प्लीज़ वॉच दिस वीडियो टिल द एंड एंड इफ़ यू आर न्यू टू द चैनल प्लीज सब्सक्राइब द चैनल एंड डोंट फोगेट टू हिट द बेल आइकन सो लेट एस बिगिन आर लेक्चर हियर फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट एस अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज सिमुलेशन सिमुलेशन इज द रिप्रेजेंटेटिव मॉडल फॉर द रियल सिचुएशन simulation techniques are used in situations where it is not possible to construct mathematical tools like linear programming in general the simulation is a dependable tool in situations where mathematical analysis is either too complex or too costly and in the simplest form we can say that simulation is an imitation of reality now let us move to the advantages and limitations of simulation so let us first see the advantages of simulation here simulation offers solution by allowing experimentation with a model of system without interfering with the real system so in simulation we have advantage of studying the system without actually interfering the real system simulation is advantageously been used for training the staff and workers it is always advantageous to train the people on simulated models before putting them to the real system and now let us see one general limitations in simulation optimal results cannot be guaranteed so it means that in simulation we get the approximated result that's why optimal results are not guaranteed here let us see the applications of simulation simulation has a number of applications some of them are inventory problems here simulation helps to find the right quantity of stock the reorder point and the approximate order value the next is the queuing problem with the help of simulation we can optimize the schedule by minimizing the waiting time for the queue and traffic problems simulation helps to predict the outcome of certain steps at high traffic areas or high traffic zones and apart from these simulation can also be applied to social problems such as pollution population environment and healthcare purpose now let us understand the monte carlo simulation monte carlo simulation is a technique which is used to solve the problems by the application of random numbers so let us now understand what a random number is random number is a numerical value random number usually lie between 0 to 100 they are considered to be random because they were generated using some random physical process and random numbers are selected in such a way that every number has an equal chance of probability of selection now let us see the steps involved in the monte carlo simulation so the first step is to find the objective of the problem whether our objective is to maximize or to minimize the next is to determine the variable that interests the objective that means we need to identify the variable which affects the objective function or we can say which affects the maximization or minimization value next is to find the probability now the probability can be given in the problem directly or if not given in the problem then we need to calculate the probability and after that we need to find out the cumulative probability now we need to select the random numbers from the random number tables or it may be given directly in our problem then we need to find the random number allocation and we need we can find the random number allocation with the help of random number intervals and determine the corresponding variable of interest that means we will find the value of these variables which interests our objective so after getting the value of the variable we will simulate the model for the given number of events 
So, let us see these steps through an example problem and the problem here says that at a tool crib in a factory the time for issue of the tool required varies and the study of 200 workers arriving at the tool crib reveals the following data. Now, this is the data where here time for servicing is given in minutes and the number of workers. So, this means that 20 workers has a service time of 3 minutes, 40 workers has the service time of 4 minutes, 70 workers has the service time of 5 minutes and 70 workers has the service time of 6 minutes. Now, we need to determine the average service time by taking 10 random numbers. So, here 10 random numbers are already mentioned in our problem. So, we need to find average service time for 10 random numbers. Now, let us move to the solution. So, our objective here is to find the average service time and in order to do so, we need to find the service times for the 10 events or 10 coming events and that can be calculated using the following models. So, we have already written here the, the random numbers that is mentioned in the problem. So, let us move here and we need to draw this table and it says certain values which is service time in minutes and this is already given in our problem. Number of workers having this service time which is also given in our problem and the probability. Now, as we know that probability is directly not given in our problem, we need to calculate the probability here. So, in question it has been said that there are 200 workers and among them 20 workers are having service time of 3 minutes. So, with that we can calculate the probability here by this equation and it says that 20 by 200 which is equal to 0 0.10. Similarly, we are going to calculate the probability for other service times also. So, these are the values. So, this is 40 by 200 which is 0 0.20. This is 70 by 200 which is 0 0.35. This is 70 by 200 which is 0 0.35. Now, after calculating these probabilities, we need to calculate the cumulative probability here which is the addition of these probabilities. So, these are the cumulative probabilities. Now, on the basis of this, we need to find this random number interval. Now, we need to be very, very careful while taking this random number intervals because as the cumulative frequency is 0 0.10, then we will consider this as 10 or we can say we will shift our decimals 2 point ahead. So, this will become 10 and from this we will take the value from 0 to 9 we will not take the tenth value so here we can see that we will take the value from 0 to 9 and we will use the tenth value as the starting value for the next service time so here we can see that this is 0 to 9 here it is 30 so starting from 10 it goes to 10 to 29 we will not take this value 30 similarly here starting is 30 and the final point is 64 because it is 0.65 so 65th we will not take so the random number interval is 30 to 64 and from here we can see that 65 to 99 now, after calculating these random numbers, we need to find the random number allocation. That means, the random numbers that are mentioned in the problem, we need to see where these random numbers are lying in random number interval. So, we will take the first value 21. We can see that 21 is lying in the range of 10 to 29. And this is showing the service time of 4 minutes and this shows that for random number 1 that is 21 we will have a service time of 4 minutes similarly we will calculate the other or we can say the second random number which is 42 
so 42 lies between 30 and 64 so here this is our second random number and it will have a service time of 5 minutes similarly we will find the random number allocation for the remaining random numbers as well so let us see here so these are the values we got by random number allocation and now let us move ahead and simulate these values so the service time for coming 10 events can be simulated as follows so we need to again draw a table which we can see that so here are the 10 events and these are corresponding random numbers which is mentioned in the problem and these are the expected time we have calculated in our previous table so for 21 we have seen that the service time is 4 minutes for 42 we can see that service time is 5 minutes and so on so these value we have already calculated from the previous table now we will see the cumulative service time so we will simply add these values and so we can see that the total expected service time here is coming as 49 so the average service time can be calculated by total service time divided by number of events so the total service time is 49 and the number of events is 10 so 49 by 10 is given 4.9 minutes so we can see that the average service time here is coming as 4.9 minutes which has been asked in our problem so i hope you guys like this lecture so this is the first time i am using the powerpoint slide to teach so please let me know if this is better or we need to switch to the previous mode which is the whiteboard and marker so let me know please put your views in the comments and if there is any improvement in this please let me know and of course please like subscribe and share have a nice day thank you